try to prove one of the claims from our textbook about the limit of the radical of a sequence going to the radical of whatever the limit of the original sequence were, well, or was. Okay, now this is actually not a bad proof, uh, but we have to really understand what we mean by this. Remember that the epsilon n definition of a sequence having a limit is for all epsilon greater than zero, there has to exist an n such that when you have n bigger than n, we can imply that, do I have another color? <laughs> there we go, that Sn minus whatever that limit is can be made less than epsilon. So in other words, we can get arbitrarily close in limit to the limit of a sequence. So since in this problem we're going to have for sure that Sn goes towards S, so in this problem, just as a little bit of discussion, we will know that Sn goes towards S. So that means that we can make Sn minus S itself, we can make this be less than epsilon for any epsilon. Right? We'll be able to say for any epsilon there exists an N and we'll be able to force this to happen for us. Okay, now that's true for any epsilon. So in other words, it's also going to be true for Sn minus S, we can make it less than radical S times epsilon. And that's going to be really important to me because I'll be able to use that in order to bound it down and actually get the limit of the radical one to cancel out and make the whole thing be less than epsilon. So the important thing to note right now is that if you are satisfying the definition of a limit, that means you could be smaller than any positive number. So this is going to work as long as a non-negative sequence. We have to make sure s doesn't go towards zero, but for any non-negative sequence of numbers, we're going to be able to get that. Uh, and the limit not being zero, we'll be able to get that this happens. Okay, so ready to give it a shot? Let's try it. Let Sn be a sequence of non-negative numbers with Sn uh, limiting towards S, and I also now remember now that I need to make that non-zero, <laughs> and then we're going to show that the limit of the radical of each term of the sequence will also go towards S. Okay, ready? Let's go for it. Go. So let epsilon greater than zero be given. Okay, we know that Sn goes towards S. So, there is a capital N, an N, such that for N greater than capital N, we have Sn minus S can be made less than radical S times epsilon. Okay, so what is that going to give us now? Thus, for N bigger than capital N, what do we have is true about the absolute value of rad Sn minus the rad S? We hope we can make that less than epsilon. Well, multiply the top and the bottom here by a conjugate, and Sn minus S times, or rad Sn minus rad S, and multiply top and bottom by rad Sn plus rad S, that would yield on the top Sn minus S, and on the bottom we would have a radical of Sn plus a radical S. So again, that's multiplying by the conjugate. The bottom does not need absolute value around it because these are definite positive numbers. Okay, now let's make this bigger. So by to make something bigger, all we really have to do is make the denominator smaller. So I'm going to make the denominator a little bit smaller. On the top I'm going to have radical, or sorry, absolute value Sn minus S, and in the bottom I'm just going to have radical S. Because since radical Sn is positive, by neglecting it I'm making my denominator smaller, and thus I'm making my fraction larger. Right? I've made my fraction larger. Okay, now according to this we know that the numerator is less than radical s times epsilon. So now we have radical s times epsilon over radical s. And notice that after those cancel we're left with epsilon. 
So we ended up successfully showing that the radical, the absolute value of rad sn minus s is in truth less than epsilon, and that completes the proof. And so therefore, the limit of the radical of sn is equal to the radical of s.